Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here at SMTAI in Chicago and I'm joined by Mitch from Kogiskan. Mitch, great to see you again. Thanks for stopping by. Nice to see you, Phil. So much going on in the smart factory industry 4.0 world and you guys are really pushing things forward. What are, the, what are the most recent challenges for you and how are you overcoming those? Well, what we've really noticed in the last year or so is that you know companies have completed their studies of Industry 4.0 and uh, are now in you know, planning implementation phases and more and more what we're finding out is that you know even though these different companies are doing their own independent studies they're all coming back with a common message to us which is that to enable Industry 4.0 and get started uh, a critical first step and the foundation of what they are going to build upon is connectivity between the different machines and systems they have in their factories. Okay, so you're providing that layer of connectivity. We're hearing lots about machine-to-machine -machine language, standards, those kind of things. I guess you're working with all vendors, all standards? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to be open, um, it's very important that you uh, maintain neutrality and a willingness to partner with any equipment vendor because ultimately all that matters is serving our end customers goals and our end customers don't want to be painted into a corner right when they're choosing equipment for factory A in Mexico a certain equipment set might be a perfect fit at their higher mix lower volume factory in Michigan maybe a different set of equipment would fit so they need to partner with companies who can provide that foundation of connectivity regardless of what equipment they use. And they might have different equipment sets in different factories for different reasons. Yeah. What about legacy equipment, equipment that we perhaps don't see as industry 4.0 ready? How do, you, how do you manage that in terms of connectivity? Well, fortunately for us, we've been working uh, in uh, the, this field for about 15 years. And uh, during that time, we've built up a library of adapters for communicating with legacy machines. Um, in a lot of case that, cases, that's actually why the equipment vendors themselves come to us, because they may have a customer who is buying a new line from them, and with that new line, they're getting the latest and greatest software from the equipment OEM, but at the same time, they have an older line that doesn't have that software, so we can connect to that and then provide the bridge to the newer system. Okay. So partnering not only uh, you know, with the equipment vendors uh, uh, to help them integrate their new machines to systems, but also to connect their older stuff uh, to those new systems as well. Yeah, that's really important because a lot of these bigger companies are acquired or they've, they've got exactly. all, all kinds of equipment yeah. from all kinds of different areas. Mm -hmm. And it's more than just the equipment talking to other equipment. There's uh, issues with stock control and all those kind of areas. How important is that in providing a holistic solution? Well, it's critical because once you have this data, then the question is, what are we going to do with it? And, and some of the most obvious uses are to have that real-time visibility of what's going on in your factory so that you can respond to issues faster, so that you can foresee what's needed next. Um, so again, on this last year or so of talking to people about Industry 4.0, another very common message we're getting is material control. And uh, this is something, of course, that our company was founded upon. Uh, but as they're our customers are collecting data, they're realizing, wow, we can use this data to really streamline uh, how fast and efficiently materials flow through our factory. By talking to a pick and place machine, we can tell people in a warehouse across the parking lot what reel is going to be needed next, or what reels are going to be needed within the next two hours so that they can replenish the lines in real time and prevent downtime. Um, and at these types of trade shows, we're always seeing all these automated warehousing solutions. There's, there's uh, storage towers, uh, there's uh, Paternoster style uh, large capacity storage systems. And uh, you know, a large capacity storage system might be great at a high volume factory, but for a higher mix factory, you may need a, a, a tower right at the end of the line just to hold the parts for that line. So by being able to connect to all these different types of systems and tell them which materials are needed where and when, we can really help with uh, keeping those lines running. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. And, and I always look at Amazon as a great example for great stock example. control. You know, the uh, automated robotic vehicles they're using and the uh, artificial intelligence they're using mm -hmm. to, to get stock in the right place at the yeah, right time. Absolutely. Mitch, thanks for talking to me. And thanks very it's much for your time. Good to see you, Phil.